Hey there, it's Jennifer. Today I am going to combine a few different techniques I've shown before onto one card, and I'll be using a, a spin on a partial die cutting technique. I'll be combining it with a zigzag fold card, which is something that I haven't done in a while, but I always think is fun. I think it's something different than a store-bought card. You can see here what the zigzag fold looks like and also the partial die cutting that you get with the butterfly wings. So let me go ahead and show you the completed card in action just so you can kind of understand how it's all going to come together. You just pull it open and there you have the card. It'll stand up on its own and you can see where the partial die cutting cuts the wings. So you can see those openings on the inside but they are intact on the front of the card. This partial die cutting on a zigzag fold works with any stamps and matching dies. I'm going to be using some new ones from Simon Says Stamp today. I love this butterfly here and I have the matching die. I store it in the pocket with the stamps and this makes it super easy to do this technique. Now before I get started on making the card, I need to have three butterfly dies or die cuts ready to go. And these are just going to be my holding place as I design the card. I just wanted to mention that I just cut three of these butterflies from some scrap paper and I'm setting them aside. Now I'm making my card base out of Nina White cardstock. Any cardstock works. This is eight and a half by five and a half and I'm going to do a score line right down the center as you would with a normal note card. So I've scored it with my bone folder and now I'm going to crease it really well with the back of the bone folder also. Now I want to draw a line halfway down the front of this card. So I have my T ruler here. I'm just going to measure in two, two in an eighth of an inch. Um, that's halfway across the card and draw a line down the center of the card. This is where um, I'll use this is what I'll use as a guide for my partial die cutting. Okay, so now I have those three butterflies that I cut out of scrap paper and I have a little bit of temporary adhesive on the back of it, just a tiny bit, so I can kind of plan where I want my die cutting to take place. So I'm just positioning them. I start at the top and I'm doing the, just three of them going down. I'm leaving some room on the bottom because I want room for my greeting when we have the card put together. So let's go ahead and start doing the partial die cutting with the zigzag fold. You can see how it's fun it is to have that little window on the inside when you open it up. Now you can do this with any die cut machine and you just use your die cut machine as you would any wafer thin die, but we're going to only partially die cut. And so it's easier to see than to explain. So let's go ahead and do it. I have my paper here, my card, and I have my temporary butterflies. I'm going to go ahead and remove the bottom butterfly and in its place put the die face down and use a little piece of tape to tape it in place. Now I only want this to cut to the right side of uh, that pencil line that I did. So I only want the cutting on that right side. So I'm going to put just that side between the plates, the, die, the cutting plates of my die cut machine. So you'll see I'm lining up that pencil line with the edge of my cutting plates. So what's going to happen is just that one half of um, the butterfly will have the pressure on it as it goes through and the other half won't have any pressure so it won't cut. So there you can see as I come through the other side that it's just cut on the one side of the butterfly. So let's go ahead and do this again so you can see it in action again. I'm going to take off the temporary butterfly on the top, uh, just tape my die in place. Um, with a little piece of tape and I'm going to position this between the cutting plates. So we've got our cutting plate here. I'm going to take my card, put the side that I want to cut um, up against the cutting plates, line up that pencil line. So you'll see only this side over here will cut. Put the cutting plate on the top, make sure the pencil line doesn't shift, and run it through again. And again, the pressure will only be between the cutting plates and only cut there. This is a great way to get more out of your dies, especially with um, dies that have some matching stamps because we're going to go back and add some stamping in here in a little bit and you'll be able to see the butterflies come together. Now I'm going to do this a third time with the third uh, die and again just line up that pencil line with the edge of my cutting plate. I did the top and bottom butterflies first so I could make sure to um, position the center butterfly equally between them. Just made it a lot easier to do. Okay, so now it's time to add some stamping to these butterflies. I'm going to do a two-step stamping. You can see how it's a little bit lighter in the center of the butterflies and darker towards the tips. And this is just a great way to get more out of your inks. So now that we've done our partial die cutting, I'm just going to go ahead and erase that pencil line. I don't want it trapped underneath the ink. The first butterfly I'm going to do is a mint colored butterfly. I'm first stamping with the lighter ink, which is Hero Arts Mint Julep Ink. And I can look through the clear stamp and position it right in the, in the correct place on my partial die cutting. It fits in there perfect. That's the advantage of having a stamp and a die that match. Now that's going to be splotchy and uneven looking at first because this is uh, the Hero Art Shadow Inks. Hero Art Shadow Inks look that way at first, but that will smooth out and even out when it dries and be solid and beautiful. 
Okay, now for the darker color stamping, I've taken the Tide Pool ink and inked up my stamp, and now I have a dry cloth where I'm dabbing away some of the ink towards the center of the butterfly. So there's just ink on the outside tips. I'm going to look through the stamp and I can see perfectly to line it up and stamp it exactly on top of the first image. And I end up with darker around the edges and the lighter in the center. And as this dries, this will even out and you'll get a nice solid image with the darker edges. Now I'm going to move on to the gray. I want to make sure my stamp is good and clean so I'm stamping off a few times on some scrap paper and make sure it's the color that I want it to be. Now I wanted to mention that you could do this technique where you kind of do the two colors on top of each other with pretty much any ink. However, I think it works best with the Hero Art Shadow Inks and the Simon Says Stamp Inks because they're the same formulation and they blend really nicely together. So you don't see like a line where the two links are, or the two inks kind of overlapped. It gets a nice blended look. So this time I'm using Fog and Smoke, which are two gray inks from Simon Says Stamp. Again, it's the same formulation as the Hero one, so it'll look nice with it. I've got the darker ink now on the stamp and I'm dabbing away some of the ink from the center of the stamp and I'll look right through that clear stamp which is super easy to do and line it up to stamp it again and there you can see the two tones stamping once again. I'm going to put a link here to another video where I did this technique on some balloons and I actually did two different colors like a purple and a pink overlapped and you can get some really cool effects. It's just a great way to add a little bit of depth to your stamping. Now I didn't do a good job on the bottom of that butterfly, so I just inked it up again and stamped it right on top. That's one of the great things about clear stamps is you can just keep on inking and stamping on top of each other over and over again because you can see through it. Now for the last butterfly, I stamped first with fresh peach, which is a little bit lighter, and then I stamped again with pale tomato on top of it, but removed some of the ink from the center first. And there I finished with my two-tone stamping. And if you want more variation, you could go and repeat that second step um, with the darker ink again if you want to, just to get an even darker look on the edges of the butterfly. Okay, so now let's go ahead and complete our zigzag fold since we have our stamping done. I am going to put a score line where the pencil line used to be, so two-eighths of an inch in from the set, uh, side of the card, but I'm only scoring between and above and below the butterflies. I don't want to score on the butterflies because I want those to stay nice and flat. Now to create the zigzag fold, I actually fold my card inside out first and crease along that. Now for the other fold, I'm just going to fold the front back. So you'll see it just kind of folds along. I've got to pop my little butterflies out here. And then I'll crease that score line. And this creates an easy zigzag, zigzag fold. I've done this design in videos before, and I also like to do it as a horizontal zigzag. There's so many things you can do with it, and it's just something fun and different. Now I decided this needed a few finishing touches because it's so simple so far. And all of these are very easy, but you could keep it pretty simple and skip these if you wanted to. I wanted to have like a, a gray um, trim along the edge of the card that perfectly matched my butterflies. So I'm taking fog ink, which I used on the butterflies, and I'm just smearing across the edge of some white cardstock and cutting two super thin strips from it. This is a great way to get finishing cardstock strips that perfectly match your stamping. You just ink them yourself. I'm holding them together to make it easier to apply adhesive to the back of them. And I'll pull them apart here and put one on one edge of the card and one on the other edge of the card. You could also mask this off and ink it if you want to, but I thought this was a lot simpler. Now I'll admit, as I do many times, I forgot about where to put a greeting. I knew I wanted it in that bottom right corner, but I didn't plan out which words I wanted to use from the stamp set. So I'm going to kind of wing it and make my own. I wanted it to say thank you. So the word thanks is in the stamp set. I'm going to cut off the S. I could do partial inking and just ink up the word thank and not ink up the S. Uh, but I decided it'd be easier just to cut it apart. And it really, you can always put it back together again. So I think I'm going to stamp the thank first with black ink and then the U underneath it. I could put them both on the same acrylic mount and stamp them at the same time, but then I couldn't get the images as close together as I wanted to. I like to have them right up against each other, and so it's easier just to stamp the two images separately. Now I wanted to add a little bit of bling to this. I love these new mini flower sequins from Simon Says Stamp. I think they're super cute. There's some colored ones, and I'm going to use actually the white ones uh, today, just so they aren't too distracting. Now these super tiny sequins are um, a little tricky to use, but it's super easy if you have two things. One is the multi-medium from 
Ranger uh, in the matte finish. This is the best way to hold sequins. And this quick sticks tool, it's got a little sticky end and a pointy end. So I use the sticky end to pick up a sequin and dip it into my multi-medium. And then I'm going to put it onto my card. And you can use the back end to move it around if you want to. Now I've done this many times in videos before, um, but I think it's worth mentioning again because I know a lot of people like to use mini glue dots for sequins, but I found that those pop off in the mail and um, don't really hold very well. And I think this multi-medium is the best for holding sequins in place. And by smearing a little bit onto your craft sheet, it's easier just to put a thin layer on the back of each of them. Now I did want to mention there's room on the inside behind that little zigzag fold to write your message. And I also wanted to use this new stamp set from Simon's Stamp that has lots of handmade by stamps. I love this one. I think this one's so cute to stamp on the back of the card and then put your initials in the inside of the heart. It's just a nice way to add to that handmade, homemade feel. I also used one of the other images from that same stamp set on the flap of my envelope. I thought this was kind of funny. It says, thought of you while making this amazing card. I just thought that was cute and a great way to um, add a little something fun to your envelope. And there we have the completed card, just a fun way to take your stamps and matching dies to create a partial die cutting zigzag fold card. I hope this inspires you to give it a try. If you're interested in any of the products, please head over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com. There'll be much more information there. Or if you're on YouTube, you can look below at the YouTube description where I have everything linked. Thanks so much for stopping by.